Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Monday, December 26th, 2022. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Today we meet the villain in the account of Esther, and his name is Haman. Haman becomes enraged with Mordecai, but decides that getting revenge just on Mordecai is not enough. No, he wants to get revenge on all of Mordecai's people as well. And so he puts together a plot by which he hopes to destroy all of the Jews in the empire of King Ahasuerus. After all this took place, King Ahasuerus honored Haman, son of Hamedatha the Agagite. He promoted him in rank and gave him a higher position than all the other officials. The entire royal staff at the king's gate bowed down and paid homage to Haman, because the king had commanded this to be done for him. But Mordecai would not bow down or pay homage. The members of the royal staff at the king's gate asked Mordecai, Why are you disobeying the king's command? When they had warned him day after day and he still would not listen to them, they told Haman in order to see if Mordecai's actions would be tolerated, since he had told them he was a Jew. When Haman saw that Mordecai was not bowing down or paying him homage, he was filled with rage. And when he learned of Mordecai's ethnic identity, it seemed repugnant to Haman to do away with Mordecai alone. He planned to destroy all of Mordecai's people, the Jews, throughout Ahasuerus' kingdom. In the first month, the month of Nisan, in King Ahasuerus' twelfth year, the poor, that is the lot, was cast before Haman for each day in each month, and it fell on the twelfth month, the month of Adar. Then Haman informed King Ahasuerus, There is one ethnic group scattered throughout the peoples in every province of your kingdom, keeping themselves separate. Their laws are different from everyone else's, and they do not obey the king's laws. It is not in the king's best interest to tolerate them. If the king approves, let an order be drawn up authorizing their destruction, and I will pay 375 tons of silver to the officials for deposit in the royal treasury. The king removed his signet ring from his hand and gave it to Haman son of Hamedatha the Agathite, the, the enemy of the Jews. Then the king told Haman, the money and people are given to you to do with as you see fit. The royal scribes were summoned on the 13th day of the first month, and the order was written exactly as Haman commanded. It was intended for the royal satraps, the governors of each of the provinces, and the officials of each ethnic group, and written for each province in its own script and to each ethnic group in its own language. It was written in the name of King Ahasuerus and sealed with the royal signet ring. Letters were sent by couriers to each of the royal provinces telling the officials to destroy, kill, and annihilate all the Jewish people, young and old, women and children, and plunder their possessions on a single day, the 13th day of Adar, the 12th month. A copy of the text issued as law throughout every province was distributed to all the peoples, so that they might get ready for that day. The couriers left, spurred on by royal command, and the law was issued in the fortress of Susa. The king and Haman sat down to drink, while the city of Susa was in confusion. Paul is now standing before the governor Festus and King Herod Agrippa and his wife Bernice. Uh, Festus has laid out the circumstances under which Paul is under his custody and how Paul has appealed to Caesar. Caesar or Festus is now going to give Paul the opportunity to present his defense before Agrippa, and Paul is going to do exactly that. Agrippa said to Paul, you have permission to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched out his hand and began his defense. I consider myself fortunate that it is before you, King Agrippa, I am to make my defense today against all the accusations of the Jews. 
especially since you are very knowledgeable about all the Jewish customs and controversies. Therefore, I beg you to listen to me patiently. All the Jews know my way of life from my youth, which was spent from the beginning among my own people and in Jerusalem. They have known me for a long time, if they are willing to testify, that according to the strictest sect of our religion, I lived as a Pharisee. And now I stand on trial because of the hope in what God promised to our ancestors, the promise our 12 tribes hope to reach as they earnestly serve him night and day. King Agrippa, I am being accused by the Jews because of this hope. Why do any of you consider it incredible that God raises the dead? In fact, I myself was convinced that it was necessary to do many things in opposition to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. I actually did this in Jerusalem, and I locked up many of the saints in prison, since I had received authority for that from the chief priests. When they were put to death, I was in agreement against them. In all the synagogues, I often punished them and tried to make them blaspheme. Since I was terribly enraged at them, I pursued them, even to foreign cities. I was traveling to Damascus under these circumstances with authority and a commission from the chief priests. King Agrippa, while on the road at midday, I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun, shining around me and those traveling with me. We all fell to the ground, and I heard a voice speaking to me in Aramaic, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. I asked, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. But get up and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you as a servant and a witness of what you have seen and will see of me. I will rescue you from your people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a share among those who are sanctified by faith in me. So then, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Instead, I preached to those in Damascus first and to those in Jerusalem and in all the region of Judea and to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works worthy of repentance. For this reason, the Jews seized me in the temple and were trying to kill me. To this very day, I have had help from God, and I stand and testify to both small and great, saying nothing other than what the prophets and Moses said would take place, that the Messiah would suffer, and that, as the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim light to our people and to the Gentiles. As he was saying these things in his defense, Festus exclaimed in a loud voice, you're out of your mind, Paul. Too much study is driving you mad. But Paul replied, I'm not out of my mind, most excellent Festus. On the contrary, I'm speaking words of truth and good judgment. For the king knows about these matters and I can speak boldly to him. For I am convinced that none of these things has escaped his notice, since this was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you believe. Agrippa said to Paul, are you going to persuade me to become a Christian so easily? I wish before God, replied Paul, that whether easily or with difficulty, not only you but all who listen to me today might become as I am, except for these chains. The king, the governor, Bernice, and those sitting with them got up. And when they had left, they talked with each other and said, This man is not doing anything to deserve death or imprisonment. Agrippa said to Festus, This man could have been released if he had not appealed to Caesar. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.